Hello, we are happy to be with you again. This is the last course dealing with ancient civilizations. Today, we'll deal with vocabulary, grammar, sound system, and ordering sentences in this course. Hello, Mrs. Ben Khalil. Hello, Mr. Dahmas. Hello, everybody. What have you prepared to revise vocabulary today? Today, we are going to deal with matching words and their opposites. Right, let's start. Consider the examples and focus on the underlined words. They will help you do the activity. The Euphrates and Tigris rivers used to flood every winter. The Vandals attacked Icosium and destroyed it in the 5th century. The Algerian Liberation War lasted seven years, from, from November 1954 to July 1962. The Ottomans erected mosques and palaces in Algiers. When the farmer had worked the barren land and irrigated it, it became fertile and produced fruit and vegetables. The Arabs settled in Andalusia for many centuries. Ancient civilizations developed in periods of calm and peace. The French colonists had to leave Algeria in 1962. Many African countries suffer from drought because it rarely rains there. Now that you have read the sentences with me and focused on the underlined words, let's do our activity, which consists in matching the words with their opposites. Right? Let's start. Don't forget that you have to focus on the words and the category of words they are, in fact. Are they verbs, nouns, or adjectives? Let's start. Destroyed and settle are verbs. Fertile is an adjective. War and flood are nouns. Let's move to the opposites now. Peace is a noun. Drought is a noun. Erected is a verb in the past. Barren is an adjective. And leave is a verb in the infinitive. I suppose that now we are able to correct the activity. Let's start. Destroyed matches with erected. Good. Settle is the opposite of leave. Right. The adjective for tire has the op is the opposite sorry, of barren. War, the noun, is the opposite of peace. And the last one, flood, is the opposite of drought. That's all for our vocabulary exercise today. Any advice to the pupils, Mr. Dahmas? Yes, Mrs. Ben Khalif. We have seen many words related to ancient civilizations in the four sessions. You should revise them. They will help you understand any text about ancient civilizations and do activities about lex Lexis in the back exam. As usual, we're going now to see the second part, which deals with grammar. What is in the program in grammar, Mrs. Benkhli? Today we are going to revise and study how to express concession. Let's start by reading the examples first. The first example, although, though, even though, Algeria has got its independence recently, it managed to make great achievements. Consider the second example. In spite of the fact that, despite the fact that, Algeria has got its independence recently, it managed to make great achievements. When you look at these two sentences, what do you notice? What comes just after the link words, although, though, and even though? Right, we have a, a subject, Algeria, and the verb, has got. Then it's followed by the rest of the sentence. Consider the second example, with in spite of the fact that, and despite the fact that. Do we have any difference? No, we have no difference. So what can we say? All these link words, though, even though, although, in spite of the fact that, despite of the fact that, are used in the same way. Right. 
now that you have noticed that it's the same in the two examples, let's complete the blanks to get the sentence structure, right? The sentence starts with the link word, although, though, even though, in spite of the fact that, despite the fact that, then we have a gap and another gap plus the rest of the sentence. Good, now let's correct. Although, though, even though are followed by the subject and the verb. Good, then we have the rest of the sentence. Good, let's move now to the second example. Consider the two sentences. In spite of or despite its recent independence, Algeria managed to make great achievements. Or, in spite of or despite having got its independence recently, Algeria managed to make great achievements. Now, let's concentrate on these two examples. What do you see after the link words in spite of and despite? Do we have any verb? No, of course not. So, what can we say? In this example, in spite of and despite are followed by a noun phrase, its independence. And in the second example, having got its independence, we can have the gerund, if we don't know how to use the noun, we can uh, have the noun phrase by having the gerund, which is the verb in the infinitive without to, plus ing. Right? Now, let's fill in the gaps to get the sentence structure for the second example. In spite of, despite, plus the blank, plus the rest of the sentence. You notice that this time we have only one blank to fill in. Let's correct it. Right? In spite of or despite are followed by the noun phrase plus the rest of the sentence. Or, in spite of or despite, plus the gerund and the rest of the sentence. Good. Now let's move to the practice. Activity 1. Supply the appropriate connector to get coherent sentences. Sentence 1. It starts with a gap. Being ruled by a king, Athens had a democratic system of government. Right? What's the gap followed by? Yes, it is followed by a gerund. So which link word can we use? Good. We use in spite of or despite. So our sentence is, in spite of or despite being ruled by a king, Athens had a democratic system of government. Second sentence, it starts with a blank. The pharaoh's tombs were very well protected. Many of them were robbed of their treasures. Again, what's the gap followed by in this example? Yes, it is followed by close, that is, a subject and a verb. So, which link words can we use? Good, we have many possibilities, so we can use although, though, even though, or in spite of the fact that, and despite the fact that the pharaoh's tombs were very well protected, many of them were robbed of their treasures. The third and last sentence. Carthage was defeated by Rome. Blank, it was a great power. What is the blank followed by? Yes, it is also followed by close, that is a subject and a verb. So the, uh, the link words we can use in the blank are yes, although, though, even though, in spite of the fact that, or despite the fact that. So our sentence will be Carthage was defeated by Rome, although, although, even though, in spite of the fact that, despite the fact that, it was a great power. As you notice, in the third example, the link word was in the middle of the sentence. This to tell you that we can start the sentence with although, or we can have it in the middle of the sentence. Right? Let's move to our second activity now. Combine the following pairs of sentences 
using the link word given in brackets. Of course, make the necessary changes. First sentence. Egypt was well resourced with raw materials. The Egyptians needed to import some of the raw materials from neighboring countries. The link word we are, uh, we are going to use is Oldo. Second sentence. The Phoenicians used to live in the desert. The Phoenicians became famous sailors with though. Third sentence. Ancient civilizations left prestigious remains. Ancient civilizations disappeared centuries ago. The link word this time is in spite of. And here we have two possibilities. Pay attention. The last one. The city was invaded. The city was surrounded by a great wall with despite. And again, here we have two possibilities. Are you ready? Let's start sentence by sentence. The first one. Although Egypt was well resourced with raw materials, the Egyptians needed to import some of them from neighboring countries. The second sentence. Though the Phoenicians used to live in the desert, they became famous sailors. Sentence three. Here we have two possibilities because the link word is in spite of, so we can use it with the fact that or with the noun phrase or the gerund. Good, let's correct. In spite of the fact that ancient civilizations disappeared centuries ago, they left prestigious remains. Here we use the subject and verb. Or we can say, in spite of their disappearance centuries ago, ancient civilizations left prestigious remains. In the second example, we use the noun phrase. The last one. Despite being surrounded by a great wall, the city was invaded. Here we use the noun phrase. And in the last, despite the fact that the city was surrounded by a great wall, it was invaded. Well done. Now let's move to the last part of our session, which is sound system. Thank you. You're welcome, Mr. Ahmed. This bite. This bite. How many syllables are there in this bite? One, two, three. Don't worry. In five minutes' time, you'll be able to give the answer. Because in today's session, we'll see what a syllable is and how to divide words into syllables. Mrs. Ben Khalil, uh, what is a syllable? Right. A syllable is a vowel sound generally preceded or followed by a consonant, as in the example, a house or happy. In the first one, you heard only one syllable, and in the second, two syllables. Now, let's practice. We have an activity where you will classify the words you will hear in the table according to the number of their syllables. Listen carefully now to the words read by Mr. Dahmas and do your activity. Pharaoh. Ancient. King, civilized, nation, state, inhabitants, government, Phoenicians, hieroglyphics, scientists, decreases, laughed, protected. Right, I think now we are going to correct our activity. Let's start. First word. Feru. Yes, two syllables. Good. Second one. Ancient. Also two syllables. Right. King. Right. One syllable only. Civilized. How many syllables? Three syllables. Right. Nation. Two syllables. Good. State. Only one syllable. Pay attention because the E at the end is not pronounced. So we just say state. One syllable. Inhabitants. How many syllables? 
inhabitants. Four syllables, good. The next one, government. Three syllables, right. Phoenicians. Three syllables. Hieroglyphics. This one is rather long. Let's repeat it. Hieroglyphics. How many syllables? Four syllables, good. Scientists. Two syllables. Decreases. Three syllables. Pay attention here because the final S is heard is. So this is why we have three syllables. Decreases. Loft. One syllable. Here the ED is, is heard T. So there is no syllable at the end. Just one. Loft. And the last one. Protected. And this time the ED is heard H. So we have three syllables. Protected. That's all for our activity today now, Mr. Dahmas. Thank you. Now we're going to move to a part called discourse. In this part, we'll see an activity that you sometimes have in the back exam, ordering sentences. And Mrs. Ben Khalid is going to give you pieces of advice on how to uh, deal with such an activity. OK. Before you do this activity, Read the sentences carefully. Read all the sentences. Some of them are complete sentences. Others are parts of sentences. Pay attention also to the punctuation because they may start with a capital letter or not. They can also end with a full stop or with a comma. So all this can help you do your activity. Let's practice now. Activity one. We order the following to get a coherent paragraph. Pay attention, in this type of activity, you are not asked to add any link word. Just reorder the sentences. Let's start with the first sentence. He united the various tribes and groups of people in Andalusia. Of course, this sentence can't be the first because it starts with a pronoun. And pay attention to the end. What about punctuation? There is no full stop, so the sentence is not finished. Sentence B. The first Umayyad ruler called the Falcon of Andalus. Right, it doesn't start with a capital letter, but it ends with a full stop this time. The third one. The golden age of Islam began under Abdurrahman. This sentence starts with a capital letter, but doesn't end with a full stop. There is just a comma. And when he became Caliph of Cordoba in 756, this sentence is the second part of a sentence as it starts with a small letter and ends with a full stop. Right? Let's do our activity now. Let's correct it. Which one is the first sentence? Good. The first sentence is C. The golden age of Islam began under Abdurrahman. Then it's followed by B, the first Umayyad ruler called the Falcon of Andalus. The next sentence, he united the various tribes and groups of peoples in Andalusia. And the last one, when he became Caliph of Cordoba in 700. 56. Good, that was our last course dealing with ancient civilizations, Mr. Dahmas. Thank you. That was the last course dealing with ancient civilizations. In the next session, we'll start dealing with the second uh, theme unit in your program, ethics in business. Thank you for attention. Goodbye. Goodbye.